If you're like me, you want your stuff to last as long as possible, whether it be your car, your laptop, your phone, anything. You work hard for your money, you save it up, you buy yourself something nice, and you want that thing to go the mile. So when it comes to my MacBook, there's a few things I do to ensure that it's gonna last as long as possible, to take care of it, and make it worth the investment. Some of these things you might do yourself, but some of these you might be surprised. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to cap your battery charge to 80%. Batteries don't like being fully charged to 100 and they don't like being under 20. So charging between 20% to 80% is gonna vastly reduce the amount of degradation that occurs within your battery. The more often you charge from zero to 100%, the more charge cycles accumulate on the battery, which is what contributes to degrading it. So when you charge from 20% to 80%, you're reducing the amount of cycles that occur with your battery. Also charging from 20 to 80% actually takes less time than if you top up from 80 to 100%. So next time you charge, take a look at that. You're gonna see. Al Dente is a free app that allows you to set a charge limit for your MacBook anywhere between 20 to 100%. Obviously if you do it at 100%, it defeats the whole purpose. Setting a, a charge limit between 60 and 80 is optimal depending on if you're staying at your desk or if you're planning to go on the move. It works with both Intel and Apple Silicon Macs and it's completely free. And in fact, when I bought my new uh, M2 MacBook Pro, when I upgraded from my Intel Mac, one of the first apps I installed right when it was brand new out of the box was Al Dente, just because I wanted to ensure my battery was gonna be lasting as long as possible for the future. I use the free version because that's good enough for me, but there is a paid version of Al Dente that allows for a bunch of extra little features. If you see that the Pro version is a little bit more for you, that's up to you, but the free version works just great. BatFi is a very popular alternative that only works with Apple Silicon Macs. I've never used it because I was always good with Al Dente. You guys are all grown adults. You could pick which one you want. BatFi I know is a little bit more visually appealing, a little bit more visually refined than Al Dente. All the links will be in the description. You can make a decision and let me know which one you pick. Next tip is to not shut down your computer every night. Now, if you're from the same era as me, you were always taught to shut down the computer when you're done using it. This is not really necessary doesn't add anything, and it actually puts a little bit of extra stress on the electrical components than if they had some current running through them in sleep mode. Unless you're planning on not using it for a few days, you don't have to shut it down every night. And if you're like me, you're probably gonna just end up using it the next day anyways. I rarely shut down my laptop. I'll do it about once a week just to clear out the RAM, or if I'm having an issue with an app or something, rebooting it normally solves that. Giving it a proper shutdown and reboot once a week just to clear the RAM and give everything a refresh is what I'd recommend. You don't wanna to go too many days without shutting it down, and you don't wanna go every day with shutting it down. So it's kind of a balancing act, but once a week restart, that's what I'd recommend. Next up, we're talking about storage optimization and cleaning up junk files. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is to delete any unnecessary files you need or archive them onto an external hard drive. The less files, the better. It's easier for you to navigate around, and the less files on the internal hard drive, or SSD in this case, the less files it needs to manage and the less indexing it needs to do every time you search for something or anytime you open anything. There's also a lot of apps that love taking up your precious disk space with cache files. For me, I noticed Adobe has always taken up a bunch of storage space. Over the years, this accumulates and can be gigabytes worth of files that you don't even know about. It's not just Adobe though, every single app will take some level of storage space. And like I said, it adds up. There's a handful of apps that allow you to clean cache and junk files off your Mac. And this actually brings me to the sponsor of this segment, and that's Clean My Mac. Clean My Mac is an all-in-one care solution for your Mac. You can easily clean out junk files and cache files safely without worry. The first time I actually cleaned out my junk files, I cleaned up 22 gigabytes. <laughs> of storage. That's a whole lot of damn storage that was just up for grabs once I cleared it. It'll also remove any broken login items left behind from uninstalled apps. It'll find any duplicate files that you may have that you don't know are there that are just taking up disk space for no reason. And it'll also scan and detect and remove malware it finds. On top of all that, it'll scan all of your installed apps and run it through a database to find if there's any updates you're missing. So if there's any crucial updates that you're missing with specific apps, It'll tell you and you'll know about it. A nice little icon also lives in your menu bar that when clicked on will show you a lot of useful performance stats. Now I like this a whole lot better than just opening up activity monitor and scrolling through the different tabs. I think this is a very convenient extra little feature that they have added. You can get Clean My Mac right now by using the link in the description. You help support the channel and you help me make better videos for you guys. So if you're interested, please use my link. And I also wanna thank Clean My Mac for sponsoring this video. All right, so we talked about maintaining the inside of the MacBook in terms of all the digital stuff, 
But what about the outside? I would argue that taking care of the outside is just as important as taking care of what's inside the MacBook. It's a mindset. So take a car, for example. If you wanna take your car and make it last as long as possible, you're gonna do everything like routine maintenance, which involves oil changes, uh, checking and inspecting parts, replacing the ones that are worn before they break, and also cleaning the car. If you want it to last as long as possible, you're gonna wash it regularly. And that's the same thing with the MacBook. Cleaning your MacBook down inside and out with safe electronic wipes, especially when it comes to the screen, you wanna make sure you don't have any cleaner that's gonna fuck up the outside of it. So you wanna use ones that are specifically designed and safe for electronics. Top, underneath, keyboard, screen, trackpad, palm rest, everything you could reach, get your hands on cleaning. You're gonna to wanna to clean it and you're gonna thank me later. This last tip might surprise you because you might think it's a little counterintuitive to the whole product line, but you're not gonna to wanna to use hard shell cases or screen protectors on your MacBook. Okay, so this is purely dependent on the type of hard case you're gonna be using. A lot of hard cases will clip onto the perimeter of the screen and the body of the MacBook. Now you wanna make sure that when you close the lid, it allows the lid to close flat and flush. If it doesn't, it might apply some extra pressure to the hinge or the edge of the display, twist it and apply pressure that's not designed to withstand. If your hard case allows for the lid to close fully, I wouldn't worry too much about it, but it's always safe to be aware of any extra pressure that's applied on the hinge or on the screen. As for the screen protectors, I'm someone who doesn't really believe it's worth putting a screen protector on. Firstly, it's not touch screen. The screen is always protected when you close the lid. You're not really, it's not taking any hands. You're not supposed to be touching it, right? With that said, there's some people that put screen protectors and the issue comes when you remove it, it might mess up the coating and the screen of the MacBook. I've seen a lot of pictures on Reddit. So if you do choose to get one, get a really thin one and just never take it off because that's when it seems like the damage occurs. Another thing you should be careful about is keyboard covers. These aren't as popular as they used to be, but you can still buy them. The main issue resides in that it closes the gap between the keyboard and the screen when you close the lid. So in turn, it could apply extra pressure to the inside of the display and it can cause damage. Anything you can do to minimize risk of messing something up will allow your MacBook to last longer without any extra added repairs in the future. So there you have it. That's everything I do to ensure my MacBook lasts as long as possible, both inside and out. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything you disagreed with. Let me know if there's things that you've already done, things you were surprised about. Please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.